Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craft Tastic, and today I'm going to show you how to work with any JPEG or ping image in Silhouette Studio to make die cuts. For this video, I'm using an image that I colored in the Recolor app, and it gives you the option to share or download or save the image. And so I downloaded it to my phone and then sent it to my computer also through Dropbox. If you don't have all those different connections and you're using an app or something like Recolor, then you can actually email it to yourself and then open that email from your computer and download it and then open that file in Silhouette Studio. Um, if you have any questions on how to do that, just leave your questions in the comments below and I'll try to give you a little more information on how to actually get the image from your app to your computer. So this image still has the recolor, still has the recolor um, branding on it. I do not own this image. I do not claim any copyright of this image. I just use this image for personal use. And I'm just sharing information that I've learned on how to do this. So what I'm going to do, this is how this is how large the image came in when I opened it up in Silhouette Studio. And also I should mention that I am using the designer edition of Silhouette Studio. And I'll leave a link below to the Silhouette Studio upgrade. Um, I've actually got mine from Amazon, so I'll leave a link below. So what I'm going to do first is resize my image to the size I want. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can actually go here to the scale menu and type in the numbers that you want or you can just go to one of the corners and once you're over that corner hold down your shift key to keep it in proportion. If you don't hold down your shift key your image is going to be stretched out of proportion. So Click on that corner and hold your shift at the same time and just drag the image down to the size that you want. Now, this is not a ping image. It does have a background. I think it's just a JPEG. So I'm just going to kind of resize it to where I want it to be. And, as you, and I'm not sure if you can tell on the video, but the, her background is not a pure white background. There's still some background there. So what I'm going to do is go over here to the trace menu and I have my image selected. I go to the trace menu and select trace area. Then I come over here and I select all the area that I want to trace and that's your whole image basically. You want to trace the whole image. And as you can see when you select the area that you want to trace you'll get these little yellow lines and those indicate let's zoom in a little bit those indicate where your cut lines will be so we don't want to cut all of this out we just want the outside edge of her we don't want all the inside so we're going to change the high pass filter we're going to turn that off and then what i do is i go down here to threshold and bring it up until all of my edges are covered in yellow. That's the main part is the edges. As long as your yellow doesn't go too far out of the image, you can try and fill in the inside part of it, but it's not really necessary. See, I went too far and then it filled in the whole square. I don't want to do that. I just want to fill in the, make sure that all the edges, all the outlines are covered in yellow. So once that's done, because I want to get this out of that background, I'm going to do trace and detach. If this was a ping image and didn't have a background, I would just do trace outer edge. But because this is not a ping and it has a background, um, I'm going to do, or it could be um, some PDFs don't have, some pings and some PDFs don't have backgrounds. Not always, but usually they don't. JPEG always has background. Even if it's just white, there's background. Um, I'm going to do trace and detach because I want her removed from the background. 
okay so now I can just click on this background you see and move it out of the way okay see there so now she she is by herself as well as this other part of the logo since this piece of the logo came off we're just going to move it here and we'll leave the little flower the symbol part of the logo on there so see how she came apart so now you have just the outside of the image now what we're going to do is select trace area again and then i'm going to select that whole area again and do the same thing one more time this time i'll take off my high pass filter i'm just going to go up again until her edges are covered in yellow and this time we can take it to 100% because we don't have the background to worry about. And that just ensures that every bit of her outline is covered so that when we do trace outer edge, and so now I can, you see the little, the red, little red line that goes around her? That's where it will cut. And I also see one little piece that didn't get removed. So I'm going to delete this edge again we're going to do that again and I'm just going to take that little speck that didn't get deleted from the background and delete it so that was my fault I should have checked so let's do a select all we're selecting everything on the canvas and select around her and make sure that we got all the little pieces off okay now let's do the trace again so select trace area since i deleted the trace before i'm going to take it down turn off the high pass and take it up and then do trace outer edge so we have our outer edge and on the screen it doesn't look perfect but that's okay it has some very minor gapping because i did take the threshold up all the way so what I'm going to do is select that little red line. Let me zoom in some more so you can see that. And it, because it's not actually up against the edge, exactly against the edge of the graphic, it makes it easier to select. So I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to right-click. And then I'm going to go to Offset. And it automatically offset this. I have my offset distance set to 0.125, which is one eighth of an inch, and I like that size. So since I use it all the time, it stays at that size. So once I have my offset, this is what gives you the white border around the die cut. Then I'm just going to delete the original red line that was there because we don't want it to cut both. We only want it to cut the one that's going to give it that white border around the edge. So I'm going to delete that one. So I'm going to I think I selected the image. Let's make sure we're selecting the inside red line. So that's gone. So now I'm going to zoom out so you can see what we have here. We have our graphic with an eighth of an inch border around it. Now, if you want to print multiple versions, you can. I suggest that you select both the graphic and the outline and group them together. So select, just drag your mouse over both, right click and click group. Or you can do control G or command G. So I'm just going to move this over. Now if I want multiples of these, then I can just click on the image, go over here to the replicate and duplicate right. And if I even want more, I can say duplicate below. And since both of them are selected, it's going to duplicate both of them below. For these purposes, we don't need all of that. So this is pretty large. Um, I selected. It is 5.56 by 3.878. So even after you put your cut line, you can still go in and drag this to the size that you want. You just look at the numbers here this tells you how high it is this tells you how wide it is just keep in mind that the smaller you make it the smaller the white border is around it so if you really want that 1 8 inch border that thicker border then you'll need to do those steps again as far as selecting the area to trace and then doing your offset at 1 8 inch so 
and then it you would just space these away from the edge as much as possible I think this is what causes a lot of people a problem when printing is it's only natural to want to get the most bang for your buck and use the whole space but with the silhouette you can't always do that so I'm going to turn on my registration marks and I just went here to the registration panel and I want to do type 1 then I'm going to make the margins for the cut marks or registration marks as small as possible and I usually just go in and put 0.3 the actual number is 0.394, but it automatically pops in when you just put in 0.3. So I just go down, put 0.3 in each box, let it pop up. And when you're placing your images for cutting, make sure that you don't get in these little hashed areas. That's what causes a lot of problems. And that's what makes you think, oh, my printer is it's not printing it right or it's not cutting it right. There's something wrong with the machine. And no. It took me a long time to learn this because I am a big fan of not wasting and I was trying to get it as close to the edge as possible, but you can't do that. <laughs> it throws off the reading of the registration. Sometimes it won't read it at all. So if you keep it away from those edges as much as possible, that should help some of the cutting problems. And again, if you wanna get as much as you can out of the paper, you can again still duplicate or replicate so I'm just going to do this one below since it's smaller. And then I could probably go to the right with this one. And then I can even just turn this one to the side just to get more cuts out of the paper. But everything is away from this little hashed transparent background area. If I really want to make sure everything is in the center, I can go to the Align menu and click Center to Page once I've selected everything. And that actually makes sure that everything is in the middle. So let's zoom out, and this is what we have. So now that I have everything set the way that I want it, I'm going to come over here. I have my registration marks. I'm going to, I'm going to go over here and print it. And I'm just printing these on regular cardstock. Then once it's printed, I'll put it on my cut mat, and then I'll choose my cut settings here. And I'm just going to use cardstock. And when I use cardstock for cutting, um, I just go ahead and do a double cut just to be sure. I don't mess with any of these settings. I leave them as is. Um, I'll adjust my blade as I see fit. But right now I'm using two blades. I have one that I use for kiss cutting stickers and one that I use for cardstock. And I just switch them out. I don't even change the settings on the blades. I keep them just like they are and just use switch between the two blades. Okay, so now that it's done printing, I'm going to go ahead and, and put it on my mat. Sorry about my grungy mat, but I use it a lot. And I use a Cricut mat for now. I'm thinking I like them better. So I'll just make sure that it's on the mat good. That's another thing. Make sure that whatever you're cutting is really on the mat well. And now I'm just going to load that into my silhouette. And then I'm going to hit send to silhouette. Okay, and so this is what it looks like when it comes off. Um, had a little tearing there, but let's just try to pop this off. I kind of peel the mat back so that my paper doesn't curl. There we go. And basically just have a few areas that might 
need a little coaxing usually that doesn't happen but For the most part, it just comes right out. And so this is what you end up with. These are the die cuts. And that's how you can use pretty much any image to make a die cut. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.